What I thought was really groundbreaking was that out of his entire, the seven surgeons that they had brought from various hospitals to complete the surgery, um, it was the first successful surgery of its kind. Um, Christian is the first person with his type of cancer to have no sign of disease and to be living, which is just huge. Hi, I'm Tegan Herrera, uh, my husband Jose Herrera, and we have five little kiddos. Um, we have Gabriel, Zoe, Christian, Harley, and Julian. The day we got diagnosed was obviously a big surprise. It was really tough. That was not at all what we planned. We knew that he was, we knew something was wrong. Obviously cancer was not at all the response we anticipated to receive. When we arrived at CHKD, mom and I were sitting there, they told us that it was uh, a tumor and it was just, the earth fell from beneath us that, that day. It was, it's, it was called a extra renal rhabdoid malignant tumor and it wrapped around his heart, his, the left airway to his lung and his esophagus. Christian's type of cancer, he is the 25th known case of his cancer, which is amazing in, its, in itself, but also had limited resources. Everything that we are receiving from oncologists and specialists is just educated guesses. Something that really stuck with me that I thought was great was um, when we did go to Duke for his surgery, um, they were very, very obviously very um, open that the surgery was gonna be successful in the nature that it would give him more time. We were not going to be able to get it out. We were not going to um, obviously be no sign of disease. He still had a terminal diagnosis. We were just buying time. And after a 14 hour surgery, Christian, um, his tumor was removed fully intact, which had never been done. And so they, of course asked us like can we can we have this tumor we need to learn more what can we do and of course by all means and so um what i thought was really groundbreaking was that out of his entire the seven surgeons that they had brought from various hospitals to complete the surgery um it was the first successful surgery of its kind um christian is the first person with his type of cancer to have no sign of disease and to be living which is just huge I think the new normal was definitely uh, an evolution of what we used to have as normal um, because nothing stopped at, here at home. Everything had to continue with the rest of his siblings and school and, and work. Um, so I think it's an evolved normal <laughs> yes. at this point. And for me as mom, I feel like the new normal was really trying to um, find a way to kind of coexist with some of his limitations. He had he now has some physical limitations, um, the emotional side of it, you know, reentering school and home after being away for nine months. Um, that was kind of difficult. Um, and then knowing that it's still an ongoing evolution, like he has another surgery on Friday. So we're just trying to kind of um, take it day by day. And we just take, you know, accept the challenges that come with the downside of some of his treatment, um, but all in all, really tried to get him back into normalcy, school, you know, a few chores, um, things just to make him feel as typical as he can. I think some things that people may not know about our journey as a family, um, I think the biggest one is realizing that while he survived, it still has lifelong effects that you have to kind of nurture and um, resolve. Um, you know, like I said just physical limitations or even the emotional aspect. A lot of things that I think myself and other people wouldn't necessarily realize as well is like Jose said that everything within a home still continues to go even though your time with him is kind of still. You know, and we lived in four different hospitals over a nine month period and we still had other kids to take care of. You still have bills, you still have house chores and um, you know, trying to take care of yourself, which seemed impossible. And so I feel like that is 
some a challenge that I think that most don't necessarily recognize once you get the we're all clear. But yeah, it's it's all the it's all the background stuff. It's all the the rebuilding of home, the restructuring of home, and you know, learning what or who Christian is or who Christian has grown into it. You know, after treatment, because it was it, it took a toll on him um, and all the rest of us. I think some of the highs were a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Christian, um, which in a family of five, that's hard to come by, um, or with five kids. Seeing who he evolved into with his limitations, being living in a hospital for nine months, there isn't as much outdoor play or, or things of that nature. So it was really nice to see him evolve in like the art side or um, Legos. He really got into building Legos. Some of the lows were the obvious. Um, you know, not breathing fresh air. We weren't able to leave his room. Like that was that was hard. Um, it was harder to get laughs or smiles, you know, from him. Also with five kids, he didn't see his siblings that much. Like that was a really hard low. Um, initially with Christian's diagnosis, he was given one to two months to live. And so how do you tell your children? So we decided to, again, focus on the highs and the good and that he was gonna get treatment. Sorry. And so together as a family, which is how we approach everything, we did this. And we would just try to do as many FaceTime calls and keep us as close as possible, even though we, we couldn't really be. Um, I feel like our kids accepted it well, um, especially our older kids who maybe had a little bit more understanding that you know he is sick and he needs mom and dad with him. Um, and he can't be here. And I think that um, that we also um, decided to do some like therapy with our kids to help maybe fill in the gaps or process. But we really, as a family, tried to keep communication open and to talk about our feelings a lot and try to answer the questions that they had while still trying to guard them from some things that maybe they just don't understand. Christian, what's your happiest memory from being in the hospital? Uh, whenever I got to, whenever I got to have a friend to play with every time, and our friendship ended like a... <laughs> oh, oh, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say as a parent, that was hard to watch. You don't realize when you're living in a hospital, there's no friends when you're a child. Friendships are so important. When he got to a part of his care, we were talking with doctors like, okay, well, they're both essentially have a terminal diagnosis. What is, why, why can't they be friends? Why can't they see each other? And they were concerned about germs and things of that nature, so we understood. Eventually it evolved to them being able to play in the playroom, kind of parallel playing. And so you didn't realize as much as you try to be there for them, they still need a friend. We received our rock salad ready bag as soon as we we were admitted and we were transferred to um, the cancer oncology floor. Um, nurses were getting us settled into our room and it was pretty much in that same time that the bag came. Um, and so then once everybody came up the room and you're kind of just sitting there and you're getting settled, we opened the bag and it was like, oh, we can brush our teeth. <laughs> and so that was really nice, but it, it was, it was instantly. Yeah, I looked at the bag and I was like, Hey, there's this. Hey, there's this. Oh, there's this. And there was just like this fun of, there was fun involved with the bag. Wow, when we found out we were receiving an entire rock salad playset, I think I, I, I teared up. <laughs> and um, because it was around the time that we were getting released from the hospital. So, what a fun idea and gift for right when he was getting home and kind of build his strength. And because we were immune compromised, he couldn't go to a park. He couldn't play with other people. We even had to wear masks with his siblings. So this was a way for him to get that normalcy back and get those the energy out without being compromised, without having that worry. And it was just so generous as a mom with five kids who we've never even had a place at. It was our first. And so it, it was super exciting and I couldn't wait for him to get out of the hospital and to be able to see such a gift. Yeah, it was, uh... When, when, we, when I was given the information about how everything would kind of transpire with the playset, like the build out and everybody coming, coming over, 
uh, I didn't expect quite the turnout that, that we had. And it was a little dreary first thing in the morning. But then that sky opened right up and there was just a big blue sky. Um, and it was awesome. Christian even went outside and put one of the first screws into the, uh, into the playset to start building it up. And I have a video of you doing that. And like he took the power tool and just put the screw right in. And there were days, there, there, there were days that he was just, just wiped. That there he had no energy, no, no want to do anything. He didn't feel like getting up out of the couch, off the couch or out of bed. And he was just exhausted just from everything that was going on. So having it in the back, in the backyard, it was really easy and accessible for him. And that was awesome. That was one of the better parts of it too. Currently, Christian is. Um completed all of his radiation, his chemotherapy. Um, with the type of cancer that Christian has or had, he'll never be considered in remission. He was just considered uh, no sign of disease. And so that is a great stage to be in. Um, so um, he currently will get uh, full body scans every month at CHKD um, for the foreseeable future, just to make sure that um, nothing comes back because it's a very aggressive type of cancer. So we are considered no sign of disease. I am seven years old. And what grade are you in? Second grade. What are some things you like to do? Oh, let's see. I like to make YouTube videos, draw, play my play my toys, and like to sleep. <laughs> my favorite superhero is Spider Man. Now why is Spider-Man your favorite hero? Because he, because he has like a lot of different, like you know, versions of him. Yeah, and I really like how he saved the world. And I want to, and I wish I want to have like superpowers like him. I think what I'm most looking forward to is um, being able to kind of close this chapter and not let it be an identifier of him or what you know we've, we've been through just to live with more purpose and yeah that's what i'm looking forward to